Good morning. Welcome to our online worship for this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, March 17th, and happy St. Paddy's Day. I'm David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, and we gather from across the diocese and further afield to offer this time of worship. The diocese ministers on and with 10 First Nations, the Haida, Shimshan, Niska, Haisla, Gitsan, Wasatwatin, Tilkani, Sakani, Kri, Indonesia, along with Mati, a privilege we gratefully acknowledge. So please come in. Join us as we reflect on the reading, sing the hymns, and pray the prayers. May we pray. God of glory, your revelation through Jesus Christ calls us into your covenant love. Enable us now to reflect your love so that the barriers erected by sin may be broken down and all people may be drawn to you through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is, There is a Redeemer. A reading from the Gospels, the festival of Passover, an occasion when both Jews and others would hold God in awe approaches as does, as does Jesus' death on the cross. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, 
glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Our reading today from John is one of these readings that sometimes I have found befuddling and other times so deeply inspiring. This week, I find it deeply inspiring because throughout the Gospel of John, there is a reflection back to the Exodus story. Jesus keeps referring to himself throughout John's Gospel as the great I am. I am the bread of life. I am the vine. I am the good shepherd. And today it is, I am a grain. And we have this whole gardening image that comes to mind. And I have to say, part of me is still thinking it springs just around the corner. It's time to start planting and plan or planning to plant and to think about what could that look like this year. Now, in Prince Rupert, I, I'm just worried that if I plant anything, well, I'm flavoring the deer from the inside out. Uh, and, and that the deer will nip in. They've done a beautiful job on the cedars this year with the fence around. So obviously fencing is not holding them out. So how do you plant then with these critters about? But Jesus has this incredible image for us because the disciples have brought to him people who are outside the covenant in some ways, people who we might not see or the people of Israel might not see as being inside the family in a full way. They live outside the land of Israel. They have come back for the Passover. As so many people have come to worship God in the temple and to offer this major festival their full heart. And so these people have come and there's this sort of chain thing that happens where, you know, the handoff between the disciples and Jesus then stops and gives us this vegetative um, at response and talking about how a seed has to fall to the ground, die to be born again. And as I think on that this week, there's two things that strikes me about it. One is we're here, right here, right now, because Jesus died for us and that we have come to believe and to know that he is indeed the son of God that what he accomplished on the cross and in the empty tomb brings us a gift of life and hope and transforms our worldview into that of, of being a Christian and what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That is an exciting thing. And I am just, as we think about you know planting a seed and you think of how you have to go back and thin out carrots or beets how you know one grain produces one seed produces much grain and much more fruit it is exciting to think that because of what jesus did there is so much life and hopefully abundant life for all who call themselves followers of jesus so there is that, that incredible analogy, that incredible, um, that, that incredible way of understanding that because of his death, we have life. Because uh, of, of his willingness to sacrifice himself for us, we can have a peace that passes all understanding. We can have eternal life and hope in the present. That as we lay things at the cross of Jesus, be it our sins, be it our wounds, be it societal injustices, whatever we lay at the cross of Jesus, we know that he has taken it up 
And that as judgment has been passed on this world, there is an abundance of forgiveness. And so we are compelled to go forward in this life of forgiveness. The other part of the reading today that gets me excited is to see when we look at the vast panorama of scripture, when we look at salvation history in its entirety, we see this great I am being reflected throughout all of scripture. We first hear it when Moses is called and he says, who shall I say, as, uh, who shall I say you are? And God says, tell him I am. And, and, and we hear, you know, I am the God of of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God who has brought you out of. I am the God who, and, and the great I am is reflected through all of scripture. And Jesus takes it up and he adds so much more to it. He adds that he is indeed the bread of life. And for those who will partake in the Eucharist, that bread of life becomes something that we hold in our hands and take into our mouths and take into our bodies. And we know Jesus in that very personal, intimate way. We know Jesus as a great shepherd as he leads us through the paths of life. And we get to experience his love and mercy anew in various ways. We can go through all the, the I am's and maybe you have a particularly favorite one and it resonates well with you. All I keep coming back to is this one where Jesus is the seed and we are in him and he, and he has brought us forth into faith, into life, and, and that we are in him and we are part of the fruit that he has produced and that we are called to produce fruit. Jesus makes that possible because he is the vine and we are the branches. We are grafted into him. We become part of him and our lives are changed, sometimes dramatically, other times subtly, as we have our eyes opened to a different worldview and different understanding of who Jesus and who the people around us are, as we see them as God sees them, that we are called to let others know of the grace and mercy of God as we have known it, to allow God to transform our lives and to be transforming ourselves. I keep thinking about how if Jesus is the vine and we are the branches and we've been grafted in Jesus and, Jesus and we are the fruit of which Jesus has produced, that we are called also to produce fruit. And that is to build up the body of Christ to bring others to know the love of Jesus. Sometimes we do that indirectly by the kindness we do, by the conversion of our hearts and in our actions, how we let our thoughts be transformed into acts of grace and mercy, how we are people who live with profound forgiveness. It isn't always an easy task, it isn't always an easy thing to do, but it is part of our journey and part of our life, and it can be very exciting. In a few weeks, we come, well, two weeks, we, we come to Easter. And through the season of Easter, Thy Kingdom Come is a initiative that came out of England that calls us to pick five people who are not followers of Jesus Christ, who have struggled to know him as their Lord and Savior, to come and to share our faith and to pray for them. And so as we get, you know, in the next two weeks, start thinking about those five people that could be transformed by God's grace and mercy, could be transformed by the love and light of Christ, who could know in a profound and real way that, that, that joy that we know and that peace that passes all understanding and to begin to pray for them and to be intentional about our prayer because we're called to produce fruit. And that fruit is something that will sustain the body of Christ into the future. And that there are people out there in desperate need to know that they are indeed loved. I think of the number of people who will talk about coming into a church and are afraid to go in because they'll get struck by lightning or they're afraid of judgment. And some of that judgment 
is about their actions. Some of it is just about who they are and the judgment that we have of people. And we have to remind ourselves that we all are forgiven and we have to be forgiving. That it isn't what someone wears or what they drive or the job they have that makes them beloved in the eyes of God. They are beloved in the eyes of God because of who they are. And we need to break down those barriers as the collect said and allow the love of Christ to flow into our world a bit more. So I invite you to pick five names now. You can start praying from now or you can wait till Easter and begin in earnest then, but to pray, have an intentional five names to pray through Eastertide and to think about how it is you could share with them the good news of God and Christ and allow and continue to ask God to transform you by his grace, mercy, and love. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Just As I Am. Thank you for your continued tithe support of the parishes and the diocese. It is most appreciated. Let us confess our baptismal faith 
as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Prayers of the People Sisters and brothers, as Jesus, in the days before his Passion, offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, let us pray for those who suffer, those who are in need, and those who seek reconciliation. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the one holy and Catholic apostolic church throughout the world, especially remembering just Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda Nichols, our primate, Lynn McNaughton, our metropolitan, and David Lehman, our bishop. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism, for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he will hear our prayers for those who have asked us to pray for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of compassion, you know our faults and yet you promise to forgive. Keep us in your presence and give us your wisdom. Open our hearts to gladness, call dry bones to dance, and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, and in the language closest to our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you to everyone who helps bring these services together week by week, and thank you to Audrey who did the readings and the intercessions today. We continue to gather across the diocese Monday through Saturday at 12.15, oh, actually, yes, 12.15 Pacific, uh, on the Cathedral Facebook page, or if you happen to be in Prince Rupert, in the Cathedral, for prayers at midday, midweek Eucharist on Wednesday. And then nightly at 9 p.m. on the Diocesan Facebook page, a service of Compline. In all things, may God continue to work in you that his perfect will. May the God of mercy transform you by the power of his grace. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and indeed forevermore. Amen. 
Our concluding hymn is, Take Up Your Cross. Let us go forth following our Lord to life. Thanks be to God.